good afternoon, fellow ruminators. Welcome back to another session, Rumination with Andrew. Thank you so much for joining as we are about to discuss a very important topical matter. And this afternoon, we are going to talk about Jamaica's emancipendence, Vibes Cartel, and our messed up values, right? Because that is what is happening in modern Jamaica, that the celebration of criminality, the celebration of criminality in modern Jamaica, because that's what it's all about, because people are celebrating because of the emancipation, as it were, of Vibes Cartel, his freedom, uh, the fact that he actually walked free yesterday when the verdict was read. Now, something is really, really going wrong in Jamaica, and we need to highlight some of these factors. But let's just begin with the dailies, right? First, begin with the, um, let's begin with the cleaner, right? And the cleaner here is saying that Emancipation Day for Vibes Cartel and Dance Fall Star freed from prison after 13 years sends message to youths, right? So this, he is the king of the dance hall industry, right? The Vibes Cartel. I'm not sure if he's a king, but, you know, right now I'm sure that he is the reigning king because the fact that he has been to prison and that he has endured all of that, you know, torture, and then he has won his case and he has walked free, I'm sure that Jamaica is going to transform him into a king because our culture is a ghetto culture, right? So we love the ghetto culture and the ghetto girls and the whatever. That is how we like to talk and that is like how we like to act. And yet still, we want to be free when we are acting like slaves, right? So it's a very good day today, Emancipation Day, to talk briefly about the fact that we are regressing. We have been regressing for years, and we need to take stock. Now, let me just share my screen and open the Gleaner article and you know, allow you to see what the Gleaner is saying. So we have here, we see Vibes Cartel and Dance Hall Superstar Vibes Cartel leaves the Tower Street Adult Correctional Facility yesterday afternoon after being set free by the Court of Appeal, right? So we have here at 5.29 p.m., the right foot of Dance Hall star Adija Vibes Cartel, former, uh, connected with Tower Street in downtown Kingston. Um, am I right? Yes, it was his first step into freedom from prison and into the welcoming embrace of a crowd of supporters chanting his name, right? And they're here and they're ready to dance with him and look at how she's dressed. And he has his, is it the clock shoes? I don't know if it's the clock shoes or whatever. Could be, oh, this is an advertisement? I'm not sure. The smartphones were up and many persons went alive from the scene, bridging the gap for those around the world who craved real-time updates. After his release, Cartel had very few words and kept it simple, leaving a message for, and kept it simple rather, leaving a message for the youths. One thing, me want tell the youth them, step out, uh, whatever, he's saying there. Children, many of whom were seeing Vibes Carter in the flesh for the first time, and their parents were outside in the sun, where they waited for almost three hours for the man of the moment to present himself right so this is the new sort of freedom and they're saying free world boss you must free world boss because he's the world boss right a man of vibes cartel vibes cartel's ilk right is the new world boss according to many jamaicans and they are taking out their children to behold the man right um this is the sort of decadent culture in which we live and this is this sets the precedence for our celebration of emancipence, right? Emancipence week. So that is what the Gleaner opened with, and they're talking about the excitement. So the excitement at Tower Street began at two twenty-two p.m. following the Jamaican Court of Appeals ruling that Carter and his co-appellants should be released. You know, it's interesting to note. I was watching a video yesterday. Um, of a Kenyan who was showing what was happening in Kenya. And the fact that the Kenyans were protesting against the U.S. ambassador, and in fact, they were insisting that she be deported. That's the U.S. ambassador to Kenya because they think that she is linked with the austere IMF policies that are about to be implemented in their country. And they're against this stringent austere IMF deal and agreement. And they are protesting 
against government corruption and the fact that they think that William Reuters visit to Washington, D.C. could have sparked that sort of austere IMF agreement. Because that's what happens, that our leaders go to Washington, D.C. and around the world and, you know, these uh, global elites sort of bribe them, right? Because I'm sure William Reuters was bribed, just like he was bribed to send troops to Haiti. And they, you know, are forced to come and sell you a package that is going to be devastating to your country. And the fact that the, the, the Kenyans could have had the tenacity to go out on the streets and protest against an, uh, an austere economic po uh, policy or economic deal, agreement, loan, whatever you want to call it, by the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, they are using their freedoms or they want to secure their freedoms. It, here, they're in Jamaica. They're in Jamaica. They are about, they're standing up for a, a you know, convicted criminal, somebody who was in prison, who we still don't know if he is guilty or not. Let's be clear on that. We still do not know if Dimes Cartel is guilty or um, he is not guilty because there were lots of flaws in the entire process. And so we can't say that he is guilty and we can't say at the same time that he is not guilty. What we can say that somebody has died, right? The same, the person who was, you know, was killed, who was murdered some years ago, he's still dead. And I'm sure that his family members are still seeking justice and they're still mourning and they're still grieving and they're suffering the loss. Now, let us say that Vives Carter is indeed guilty. Can you imagine the suffering that the family is going through when they see Jamaicans showing up to celebrate this moment, not even being aware because they do not know if he is not guilty. None of us, right, is able to say whether or not he is guilty or he is not guilty because of the faulty, you know, Jamaican judicial system. And I'm not suggesting here that, you know, Vibes Carter should not have been let free, should not have gone free. But my suggestion is that we are, we are seeing a populace, a large mass of the populace going out to celebrate Vibes Cartel's release, suggesting that, you know, justice has been served. While there is no justice in a country where people are suffering economically, politically, where there is, they're not secure in their homes and on their properties, right? But they're, they're actually, they have the strength to go and to listen to the verdict and to celebrate. But when the IMF package was actually being implemented in Jamaica, they did not protest. And that is why we are the poster child of the IMF or for the IMF because they know that Jamaicans did not really protest against anything because all they are talking about or all they are interested in is entertainment and the celebration of criminals and criminality. And we can see that this is a historic moment because that's what we're celebrating. You know, fast forward from 1962 to 2024, we are now celebrating criminality. That is our new emancipendence. And let me look at some of the dailies. Let's not waste time here. Let's continue with what the dailies are suggesting here. Um, we have here the Observer, you know, published an article yesterday after his release. And I saved it and I said I need to, you know, read from it, you know, from the Observer, the Jamaica Observer. Now, I'm not sure why these things are these, you know, pop up signs. So we have Cartel Freed industry celebrates. So everybody, the industry, the, that's the, the dance hall industry, the music industry, whatever you call it, the entertainment industry is celebrating Vibes Cartel's release, right? And I'm sure people are going to say, stop, leave word boss alone, right? Yeah, leave word boss alone to your own detriment, right? Leave word boss alone to your own detriment. Because everybody is laughing at Jamaica. Jamaica is a laughing stock of the Caribbean. No other country behaves in the way we are behaving. Now, former Gaza Empire member Sheba, 
believes that justice has finally been served following the release of Dives Cartel and his co-accused in the Court of Appeal on Wednesday. So we, this is Cartel Free, the industry celebrates. So that's what it says. He's bigger now than life. He's a larger. He's larger than life. The entertainer who is known for collaborations such as Like Christmas and You and Him, They're with the Gaza Empire, found said founder rather said that she expected to be disappointed it again, but was pleasantly surprised by the news. So she talked about the fact that she is surprised and she's happy that Vibes Carter has been um released, right? He he's now free. He's now free to walk the streets of Jamaica as a free man man who was and his co-accused who were actually um condemned previously but now he has been set free because the courts in jamaica and once you're connected and you have money um then we know that that is going to be the um the glue right to freedom once you have money you have fame then in jamaica justice is not necessary and you can actually overstep justice and the laws in Jamaica, right? Because that's what it is. It's a slave society, it's a plantation. So we have we see here where we have party will be even bigger, right? That's what they're seeing party atmosphere in Kingston as fans celebrate dance hall stars release. Right. And we see here I sat to the canon and this is his lawyer and he's celebrating and look at the plantation here. Right, this is a big plantation, almost like it's in Haiti. Right, look at look at what is happening. Big, massive plantation. Nothing is in the the the, the, the brains of these people. So we have here fans of entertainer Vibes Carter reveled in a party atmosphere in downtown Kingston on Wednesday after the dancehall superstar and his co-accused were freed of murder after thirteen years in prison. Right, so he's now bigger. Right, he's now even bigger, or will be even made bigger. Following the ruling, hundreds of cartel fans celebrated in the streets while speakers blared many of his hit songs. I am feeling overwhelmed. We now lie. He deserves this. Worse, the world about the, the bar sick. Vibes cartel made me come out here in sun, one woman said. Right? So they went there and they said, big up Vibes cartel. I'm feeling great. It's something big in the UK. We love him over here or over there, and we need to see him soon in concert, the woman who identified herself as Tash said. So they all want him to go to have concerts. So the Privy Council also remitted the case back to the Jamaica Court of Appeal to decide whether uh, there should be a retrial. Now, this is interesting because there is a particular news that came from the dailies. Let me see if I could pull that up in which they were talking about the fact that that is why it's probably necessary to still have the Privy Council, right? Because if perhaps had it not been for them, Vibes Carter would not have been set free, right? So I think that there is now a discussion in Jamaica whether or not they, I think that was an article that was in the Jamaica Gleaner this morning about whether or not Vibes Carter, what the, the Privy Council should be, um, discarded with or should we still have it moving into the Republican status because had it not been for them and had it just been for the Jamaican courts or the probably the, the Caribbean court perhaps that Carter would have not walked free right but the fact that they sent that the trial to Jamaica it meant that you know he had to have walked because you know we could not have secured another trial. It would have been too expensive. Jamaica would have to pay for all of that. And the state does not have all that money to pay. So I think, yeah, there's an article here in the Gleaner that says, um, Cartel case makes argument for retaining Privy, privy Council, say, lawyers or, say, attorneys. So that is what they're saying, that his case, Cartel case, the Cartel's case makes it, makes the argument that it is good to retain or you know, to retain the Privy Council. So that is what is happening in modern Jamaica, right? The land of Marcus Garvey, but it's no longer the land of Marcus Garvey. It's the land of Fives Cartel and, and you know, the Budja Bantons and the entertainers. The, 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 these are the ones who are seeking to, you know, I should say, 
you know, the young people are trying to pattern their behavior, right? And that is how Jamaica is going to be, a big ghetto um, plantation-like country, because it is a plantation. There is no doubt about that. Um, we look like slaves on a grand plantation, and I think that Jamaicans are happy with that sort of image. I think that we're happy with that sort of appearance. We love to showcase the ghetto and the you know, the, 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 the lower values, all right, the animalistic values of our nature, of ourselves. That is what is on display right now. Because for a man to have been accused, and I'm not suggesting that he is guilty, as I'm saying, but he was accused, right, of a very terrible crime, a brutal crime, a brutal murder. And people are celebrating now, this is not somebody who was, you know, we could say that he, before this case, that he was not engaged in other controversial stuff, in other accusations of criminality, because he was. And his music, his music evokes and, and invokes a lot of the criminal elements in our society which he promotes, which Vibes Cartel promotes, the criminality. He promotes that through his music. And the sexuality and the sexual deviance in our society. And we do not think that Vibes Cartel should be properly assessed and perhaps should get some... I think Vibes Cartel needs therapy, right? Vibes Cartel needs, in fact, the entire Jamaican culture the entire Jamaican culture needs some form of therapy, right? But we are celebrating, and because again, we, we need therapy because the only society that needs therapy could be celebrating Vibes Cartel's release, right? And his, the, the, the fact that he's walking free, only a society that is actually suffering from mental derangement syndrome right because that is what we're you know we are really suffering from mental derangement syndrome in jamaica we do not think that our population is actually conscious and sane right because i don't think that a sane society would be responding would be reacting to vibes cartels release as we are doing in jamaica no so sane society would be doing that. No civilized society would be doing that. But we find ourselves doing that because we do our values are messed up. Our values are messed up. And you know, in Mr. Patterson's, not Mr. Patterson, but Mr. Golding's lecture at the Norman Manley Law School two days ago. Right? The man is saying that he's skeptical of where Jamaica is heading. He's skeptical. Because who in their right mind could be positive about our future? When we see the precedence, the foundation that is being built. And there are people who are suggesting, oh, that we're a young nation. Yes, we are a young nation, but if you are going to be prosperous, you have to lay the seeds. And we are not laying the seeds for the soil to yield good fruit or to produce or to yield a good tree. We're not, we're not laying the soil, we're not preparing the soil. What we have in Jamaica is a culture that is decadent and that needs to be elevated. We're going backward instead of forward. And you have the Dr. Orlando Patterson who made, which I will do very shortly, perhaps this week or next week, I would say next week, the, 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 the comparison, the comparison, comparative analysis between Barbados and Jamaica. And one of the things that he mentioned is the fact that by the 19th century, in the middle of the 19th century, Barbados was already modeling 
the behaviors and the myths and the values and the mores of the British society, the British elite society. They wanted to be educated and to be smart, to be intelligent. And instead of, you know, all the way fomenting revolutions and being angry against the elites, you know what they, Barbarians at that time in the 19th century did? They decided that they would have educated themselves, that they wanted to be smart. They wanted to be like their elites or be better than they were at the time. They wanted to have outsmarted them. Yeah? That is what they wanted to do. They were not trying to copy the behaviors of the man on the plantation. Right? When slavery was terminated in Barbados, the Barbadian... The Barbadians were not trying to copy the behaviors of the people at their level. They were trying to copy, and they did copy successfully, the behaviors of the upper echelon of society, who were educated, sophisticated, and intelligent. What we have in modern Jamaica is a populace who, for the most part, are trying to copy the behaviors and the mores and the value systems of the lower class, of the uneducated, of the illiterate, of the dark minds. That is a society that we have there right now that we're celebrating during this emancipence week. That is the society that we are currently nurturing, that we have been nurturing now for decades. There is no civility in that society. There's a lack of cultural awareness, of cultural sophistication. And that is why we don't want you to speak English anymore. We think that to speak English is too sophisticated and it represents the values of our slave masters. But there are things that our slave masters have that we need. We need their education. We need their money. We need their cultural values, some of their cultural values, some of their cultural institutions, some of their financial institutions. We need to build on these because we need them. Right? And the Barbadians decided that that's what they would do. They would copy that which elevated them, that which empowered them to become better citizens. And that is why you have an advanced society in Barbados, while Jamaica has a backward society. Because we have been for many years now patterning the behaviors, the mores, the values of the lower class. Right? Because our elites at the University of the West Indies will tell us that, yes, because it's African, it's African. And to be African means that you need to be stupid, you need to be like a Bob Scott, you need to be a criminal. Right? That is how we are portraying our Africanity, our African identity, our Africanness. That is how we are portraying it to be. It is crude, crass, criminal, boorish, uneducated, illiterate. That is what Jamaica likes, and that is what we are promoting to the world. Jamaica to the world is an illiterate, crass, and boorish society. And we can call Jamaica right now the Vibes Cartel Society, because that is what it is. Because here you have in Kenya, there you have in Kenya, I should have said, a situation in which the IMF is seeking to take advantage to run rough, um, roughshod over the people's lives. And the people are standing up to the International Monetary Fund and saying, no, we're not going to accept what you're doing. We're not going to accept your policies. And they're even calling for the resignation and for the deportation of the U.S. ambassador because who they think is linked with the IMF policy. She's a billionaire. And many of these diplomats are not sent to your country to ink out a relationship or to promote the relationship between Jamaica and their and the American culture. Many of these ambassadors are sent to ink out 
business deals that will not be in the best interest of the, these countries, but that will be in their best interest, the interest of the oligarchy. But they're in Kenya, they are intelligent enough to know what is happening. In Jamaica, that's not important. You know, that's not important. That is not important. You send out videos on about crime and balance, that is not important. Right? Because that's so the system set up. You don't care. You don't care when people lose their lives. And what we're seeing happening there with this five scorcher case is a numbness that is in, that is pervasive with regard to criminality. We're numb, we're evil, we're wicked. And that is why we're celebrating a man like Five Scarto, because we are celebrating evil deeds. And I'm not suggesting now that he is innocent, but the fact that he has been a controversial figure, the fact that he has been, you know, uh, releasing very lewd lyrics, lyrics that have not empowered the Jamaican youths and the minds of even older Jamaicans, their parents. Look at the social decadence that parents are going to be taking out their children when perhaps they should be doing their homework. To see what would have happened if the verdict of Vives Cartel. He's a, he's a Nelson Mandela. Vives Cartel is now equivalent with the likes of a Nelson Mandela and uh, Marcus Mosaic Garvey. I wonder what Marcus would have thought about the entire process. That in modern Jamaica, his people are living as if they're on the 19th, probably 18th century plantation in Jamaica. Because I think life was better in 20th century Jamaica, in perhaps 19th century, as much as we think it was not. But at least people thought we were poor but people understood that the values that came from a certain class were better than just wanting to stay at the bottom of the social rank, the bottom of the ladder. Because that is what our children are now aspiring to becoming. Like Vive Scarto, like the man on the street, the one who is pushing the carts, the one who does not speak well. We are a society in decay. We are a society in decay. And it's happening every day. It's not like happening once per two years. Every day it is happening in Jamaica, in modern Jamaica. And Jamaica is not modern, by the way. We should be embarrassed about taking people there. Because what are they going to see? An antisocial grand plantation people there having no values no sophistication most of whom are not able to communicate intelligently with the world right these are the, the values that we have for so many decades been patterning Right? And idolizing, not only patroning, but idolizing. Because the Vibes Cartel is now an idol. And he is now the new hero. Might as well we make him the new hero, another hero. Yes, I would clamor for him right now to put down the Marcus Garvis, put these people out and just put up Vibes Cartel as the new image of Jamaica. Right? Sell him to the tourist people. Let the tourists, let him gather tourists to the island. Because he should represent now. He should represent the new value system of modern Jamaica, Five Scott. Right? And it's not that this guy is not an intelligent man. He is an intelligent man. And Vive Scott could have taken a different route, a different road, if our society was a healthy society. Vibes Carter could have made Jamaicans feel proud because he's not an idiot. The man's vocabulary is extensive. 
I went to Jamaica in 2004 and he was being interviewed on one of the major television stations there. And I had to ask one of my family members, who is this guy? Who is this dancehall singer or entertainer? Because his language was very on point and his vocabulary is extensive. The guy is no idiot. But he chooses to walk that path because Jamaica is a criminal society and that is what we celebrate. And that is what we're making money. And I've told you on many occasions that Jamaican society is a criminal society. And that is why Vibes Cartel is being revered, not only by the lower class people, but even by some of the upper echelons. They're not showing their faces, right? The members who belong to the upper echelons of society are not showing their faces. So the violence has even moved from the bottom to the top. The top to the bottom, the bottom to the top, everybody's now impacted by the levels of criminality in our society. Right? At this point, I can't trust anybody there. Not even the lawyers in Jamaica. I would not want a lawyer in Jamaica to represent me. I hope not. Hopefully, none there will ever represent me. Because the system is so corrupt to the core that I'm not sure I would want to even drink water from them. Right? And this is why we're having criminality every day. This is why people are going to be murdering. And right now, because it's a celebration of Vibes Carter and what happened, the criminals who have money who have, and who are connected to powerful people, they know that they can kill and they will go scot-free. They know that now. So be prepared right now that there is going to be an optic in crime and violence. And yesterday I published a video and uploaded a video about the fact that the United States has also issued another travel advisory, level three travel advisory on Jamaica about the fact that citizens should reconsider their trip to Jamaica. Thankfully, there are some diehard Jamaican lovers, so they always go to Jamaica, no matter what the travel advisory says, you know, the, the travel advisories say, the people still go because they love the country and they still support us. And we thank God for them. But there are people who are reconsidering and who are listening to what their, you know, leaders tell them to do. Right? And all we do every day is to have these attacks and we have to respond to the advisories. It's a business and we have to promote, which makes cost a lot of money. We have to send propaganda to America and to Canada and to the UK, wherever the tourists are coming from, to sort of have a form of damage control. Right? When these sort of funds could be used to do something more productive because you don't have to sell a country if the country is, is good and the country is is safe and the country is sophisticated and advanced people will go right i'm sure barbie doesn't have doesn't have to do the level of advertisement and advertising of its country like jamaica has to do because other people will say barbados is a sophisticated country Right? Everybody to whom I have, I have not been to Barbados, but everybody to whom I have spoken and who have been there have all said that. Right? Is Barbados, you know, faultless? Is it an impeccable nation? No. But it is moving towards that. Well, not impeccable. Impeccable because none is. But the fact is that it's moving towards advancement. You can say that Bar uh, Barbados is heading on a path to becoming a first world nation. We are not. Every day, we are just a young nation. And that is what I heard the Marlo Marlene Malakou Fort suggesting at, you know, Mr. Golding's recent lecture. Oh, don't worry about it. We're just a young nation. And I'm positive because we are on a path. And it's a process. Everything's a process. 
it's a process, and I believe in process, don't get me wrong. But if the foundation is not laid, then the process will not work. And there is not a good foundation that is being laid in Jamaica at the moment. First of all, we have to get our economic our economics right, and we're not doing that. When we allowed the IMF to have gone there and to have exploited us in 2013, and perhaps even still now, we did nothing about it. We believed everything that these people told us. From Dr. Peter Phillips to um, Audrey Shaw to Nigel Clark. We believe every word that they told us, not understanding that these were just marketeers. They, they were actually marketing specialists selling to us an austerity that if we were aware of it and the profundity of the austerity and how it is setting our nation many years backward, we would have protested. We would have said, under no way are we going to accept it. But we believed them because they were clad in a suit and they told us that, yes, you have to ban your bellies, while they were not banning theirs. The politicians were not banning their bellies and the economic elites. It is you, the ordinary man, who have to ban your bed and pay these taxes, right? While the elites went scot-free, scot-free, right? But the Kenyans understand what is happening. The Africans understand what is happening. You don't, even though you claim that you are African, but you are illiterate, you're stupid. You're a stupid African. That's what you are. I'm not sure the Africans would like to claim you. Right? It's time for us to wake up. It's time for us to get our acts together. It's time for us to get our business straight, to straighten up our business deals. Right? Because everybody knows, everybody in Latin America, and perhaps many parts of the Caribbean, understand that the IMF is a neoliberal institution. And what they seek to do is to exploit. We, on the other hand, seem to think that they're our friends and they're helping to get us on a safe path to economic growth. When that is so far from the truth, what they're seeking to do is to destroy us and to control us. And the Kenyan on the street, not now the Kenyan from the University of, of Kenya or the academic elites, the Kenyan on the streets, they know that. The, the, the Jamaicans at the University of the West Indies do not seem to know that, right? Because the economic people at the University of the West Indies were, were, were actually praising, were lauding the efforts of the IMF and saying, yes, we have to take the, the, the bitter medicine. We have to take it, right? And look at the effects of the bitter medicine. It's one thing to take up medicine in your bodies and it tastes terrible and, you know, it had terrible effects on your body, but you know, after a while, the, the desired goals are achieved. Your body, you know, got rid of the toxins or, you got rid of the cancer or whatever was in your body, was afflicting your body. But in Jamaica, we have drunk the bitter medicine, this bitter economic medicine. And we have not seen any improvement in Jamaica in terms of, of our economics. We have not seen any improvement. Right? But... Yeah. Why look at economics? Why co be concerned about economics and political stability? Be concerned about vibes cartel and entertainment and the political circus that is in Jamaica, which is also entertainment. Right? The political ball that is being played between GLP and, and PNP is a circus. Right? 
It is a concern about you and your children and your grandchildren. And you are concerned about them. Whatever the case is, right now, as we're saying, Vibes Cartel's case and the fact that he's going to walk free and that he's a free man right now, that he's going to, he's already a free man. It supports the current administration in their quest to remain with the Privy Council, right? And I think that this was strategic. You cannot tell me that this was not strategic. Everything in the whole Vibes Cartel process and the case, right? was or is strategic and it's helping or meeting some political end game, some political goal, right? But at the end of the day, the citizens of Jamaica are going to be the losers. The citizens of Jamaica are going to be on the plantation with no sort of promise, with no sort of hope to ever being free. Thank you so much for joining. I hope that you like and you share and you subscribe. Uh, it was a very great pleasure to have, you know, interacted with you one more time. Hope that you'll have a great Emancipence Week. But remember now that it's time to reflect and to reflect on what freedom is all about. See you. All the best to you. Bye.